Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to build this little guy. This is an 80 millimeter frame that I got from Picnic Quads and this is a traditional H frame. Uh, we've got um, an excess of screws and um, rubber grommets and nylon bolts all in our package here. The Picnic Quads, they always come packaged real nice. Um, this will actually end up being a bottom plate. It's got this cutout like you might angle up your camera or your antenna through there, but I'm going to put this on the bottom and um, then hang my battery from that. I kind of like how they fly with the battery on the bottom rather than the top. Um, we've also got, if you saw the last video, we've got a repaired Seisky board. This is with the last bypass or the LAS bypass. Um, Chris still put together some instructions with um, another user, but it goes by LAS or LAS, um, on how to repair these boards when you have a, um, when you, when the guy behind the camera makes a mistake and he plugs in a battery wrong and poof, you get magic smoke and you can see that little guy is uh, right there. He's, he's burned, but you have to remove the one next to it in order to do the last bypass. So. This should work out pretty well. I am also going to reuse one of my FPV DIY kits. I may cut down this antenna. Um, this has got the five volt tunable regulator and it's got the uh, three gram, uh, I think it's a, it's advertised as a 170 degree camera on it. But I've also got this little pinhole camera, which I believe is 85 degrees. And I'm hopeful that um, I can either use this camera or I can use this lens on that and um, see what the difference is. Uh, I'm excited to see if you bring that field of view in, if that somehow makes flying easier. So most of the cameras, you know, are 120 degrees or greater anymore. Um, but the, you can find camera lenses that are smaller. And for micros, these work out really well. Uh, we've got uh, Multirotor Superstore 80-20-17 motors. Um, these are the motors that I tend to buy. I keep a couple of cheap Hobby Kings around just for emergency backups. I try to keep a set or two of these on hand. These are $14.99 from the multi Superstore, Superstore. And um, they, they're good. I enjoy them. I, I think the speed that you get out of these, the efficiencies, they work really well. And then I put um, hubs and props, the clears, right on top. Um, I buy mine. I think they're branded Afunta, A-F-U-N-T-A. Uh, you can get a pack of like eight sets for about ten dollars. Um, I also have some carbon nylon mix uh, hubs and props that I got from the Multi Rotor Superstore. Or no, that those came from the Micromotor Warehouse. Uh, unfortunately, they're they're not um, doing very well, so um, he's not selling those on his store very anymore. Matter of fact, he's if you bought some from him he's giving you more just for free just because the results haven't been very good he's a, a really reasonable guy and then we have sockets that we can plug our motors into so we can sock we can solder these directly to the board i'll get one of these out this this is uh, another technique that i haven't used but i went ahead and got some sockets so you can take these little sockets and solder them directly to the board and then you can plug your motors directly into it. You do need to be careful to make sure you get the orientation of the socket correct. You, if you've got a new board that has still has the solder holes in it, you can put these down in it and then solder from the bottom. Um, this is a used board that already had solder. I don't have a solder sucker. I'm not going to take the time to try to remove it. So I'm just going to go to the side and um, I'll use this one as my template for the motor wires on which way they go. But you do need to be careful when you're soldering these on that you get them correct. They might be upside down in order to make the um, wires line up to the right polarity that they need to run properly. And then we'll use hot glue to glue everything down here. I think that's probably where I should start is hot glue this to the main plate. Um, one thing you might consider is I believe this center chip on these boards uh, let me get something to point with so you're not just looking at my finger. The center chip right here is the accelerometer. And you should probably line up that accelerometer with dead center on your frame. So you want it, the accelerometer to come dead center in the cross between your two motors. That way when you yaw, it'll, it won't will yaw in a loop or an oval. It will actually yaw in a circle. Uh, you may not notice that with micros. It might you, you may only notice it with bigger ones, but... 
if you want to do tight yaw turns or something like that it could make a difference in its flight characteristics so uh, try to locate these boards you know dead center as you can and uh, that should probably yield the best results all right i'm going to fire up the hot glue gun and get this going all right i think the uh, hot glue gun is ready to go so again we're going to try to get this centered and how i do this is i just hold it in position and then i put hot glue around the edges um, in this particular case because i still have some soldering to do what I, what i'm going to do is just hot glue the front the leading edges here and then i'll use this as my palette to do the soldering on it'll help hold everything i won't need my helping hands near as much but i think yeah, that's about center. Nice thing about polycarbonate is that you don't have to worry about it conducting electricity. So you don't have to insulate it completely. You can actually press it right on the board like I am here. And then we just squeeze a little hot glue down here in the corner. Make sure we got that square. We can move that around a little bit if we need to. Just kind of hold that for a minute looks pretty good I'm also planning on doing a um, micro uh, building tips where I cover you know five or eight things that um, I think are most important when you're building uh, after doing three of these I, I've learned little bits I've made many mistakes um, so uh, when I get that video done I'll put a card right up here and you can click that to uh, watch the uh, building tips video which will be just kind of uh, me talking about building these things. All right, all right, feels pretty solid. So that'll give me a nice uh, palette to solder on. You'll look at it from the profile here, and we'll add more hot glue. Uh, little stringies. We'll add more hot glue after we get the uh, sockets and motors and everything in. So for right now, I'm going to unplug my hot glue gun so it doesn't burn me. Okay, so now we need to use our template here of how these motor wires are going to connect. Let me get my solder ready. Long old string. I just string a bunch out, lay it in my workspace. So orientate these the same. And if we look here, um, see if I can get this straight. It's hard to see. So the voltage connections are all in the inside, that's right. I don't know if I have a fine enough pointer. So on the inside of all these is where the red wire would tr traditionally go. And in the case of these motors, the white wire on the front right connects to the red. And the red wire, which makes sense, connects to the red. So we've got white and red go to red, and that should help us sort everything out for how we need to have our sockets on. So now we need to get a motor out and see how they plug in. So let's, I'm gonna start with the front right. Whoa, get a socket here. How do these plug in? I haven't used the sockets before if you didn't notice. So we go right like that. So in our case, because white goes to red, this one will go right on here like that. And then this motor will go right on here like that. So I'm gonna do those two first. This will probably be pretty tough to film. <laughs> There's already solder on there, so I'm hopeful that that will help make things a bit easier for me. Might not be pretty, but when it's flying through the air as fast as fast can be, pretty isn't our top concern, is it? So I'm just gonna warm this up. Hopefully you can see that. Because I've already got solder on the pads, I'm just laying the socket leads on top, putting my soldering iron directly on the lead, 
to warm up the solder that's laying underneath. Now I need to check it. That seems awful wobbly, doesn't it? Okay, so we got everything mounted up. We've got our motors in place. I'm going to add a little hot glue to our sockets. I'm going to add um, some hot glue to the back corners from the underneath side. And just to secure everything down a little bit more. Just kind of smoosh it in there. Little stringy things, we'll deal with those when they dry. And go to the underneath side. Put some hot glue right down in there. Just securing the board. So that'll dry and it'll keep our board in place. Okay, so we've got a fully functioning line of sight flying quad right here. We just add our props and we're good to go. So, yeah, the next part would be FPV if you were wanting to do that. Um, this is uh, my DIY pack that I've already built. I'm going to start this by, sorry, just reach across here. Use my little ceramic plate. This is just a tile that I found laying around the house. And when we bought it, I'm going to start by hot gluing your camera. And I'm going to actually probably put 10 to 15 degrees of up tilt on this. So I'll probably have it angled up like this. It's really hard to see. These cameras are so small. But I'll probably angle it up a bit. I'll still be able to see the ground so I can land if I need to. Well, we obviously need to land. Um, but the, uh, the tilt up really helps when you get to flying forward. Um, to where you kind of center your view and if you want to fly faster and faster and faster just and you want to make yourself do it the easiest way to do it is just increase your tilt on your camera because it will naturally make you pitch forward um, to center your view all right so let's get this camera on here I don't think I got as much angle as I wanted there. Just got to hold this in place until it dries a little bit. See, there we go. The reason why I use this ceramic tile is that stuff just pulls right off of it. it it's never permanently got hot glue or electrical liquid tape, nothing uh, permanent on it. So that's a nice thing. Uh, next bit, we will hot glue this, and I'm going to put it slightly in front of these uh, holes, and if it pushes my antenna back ever so slightly, I can always manipulate that a little bit, and I can uh, make sure that the antenna isn't in the way of the props. Or you could just make this a little bit cockeyed but that I don't want it in the center though either I want it I still want it off to one side so I'm just gonna add some glue here down here at the bottom I'm gonna put some back on my antenna here because I don't want that being torn off and hot glue will give me a little bit more uh, stability and put some more hot glue in the front we don't want to cover up this um, metal plate here on the top either because that's um, part of the cooling mechanism for the VTX add a little bit more over here I'm gonna go from the underneath side Let that dry a touch. 
put some more for my camera. Oops, not quite dry. Kind of wiggle these wires around here. Got to create some space to uh, secure the Pololu, which I'll put on the front of the VTX. So I'm going to add some hot glue to these wire loops here. Hold that for a minute. It should be fine. So I'm going to kind of all in one here. I want to get these flat as I can though. Because again, I want to bring this profile down as much as I can. side nice thing about this plate is if uh, for some reason I break an arm or something on this I can just get a new frame and I can add this plate right back to it and all my work's done I got my FPV kit already made right to it okay so I'm pretty happy with that Put the hot glue aside here. So we uh, check our polarity and make sure we've got everything wired up as we expect it to be. And we're going to connect these two bits. This might be difficult to show. Make it so, huh? These nylon screws, they just go down through the holes. They thread down through the holes. They don't just punch through. And then we come from the bottom with one of the nylon nuts. And then we bring our plate on. I'm not sure what all these rubber grommets are for. Maybe you can use those instead of the nylon nuts. I just use the nylon nuts. Now well, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this while I put on these nuts. Plug in first. I'm 
Line them all up. So this is where we're going to find out if this plan is going to work at all. <laughs> Come on, go up. I have a feeling my camera is going to be looking right at the top of the quad. You see that? Well, I'll make an adjustment if I do. <laughs> I can always move it forward or something. It's just hot glue. But I've got to move my nuts down because... Yeah, there we go. That's about right. We don't want to be squashing the camera every time we come down to land. Knocking it loose. And Nobody wants to do repair. We just want to fly, right? That looks good. So interestingly enough, it looks like I got a whole bunch of rubber grommets and only one set of nuts, which is unlike the last frame I got from Picnic Quad. So I've got to use these because I've got nothing else. Well, a new experience. They do go on nice and easy. Whoops, going the wrong way. You can see how it just kind of mushes my tan and tan out of the way, which is no big deal. I mean, it's flexible, so it shouldn't be giving us any problems. That's an issue, though. See how the hot glue keeps the nut from sitting flat? Um, normally what I would do is um, take my sharp edge and kind of trim that out. But for right now, let's see, is this flat? It's pretty close. We're going to call it good. We can make these final adjustments after we start to get used to it, get comfortable with it. There we go. So we're done pretty much. Let's see what it weighs. All right, let's compare it. 41.2. Any bets? 44.7, isn't that funny? Well, the big difference here is this FPV uh, system that I got, the Quantum Elite, that's only four grams the way it sits and the one I've got in here is almost 10 grams so that's where just about all that weight comes from um, and I will add uh, leads like this to um, this quad as well um, I just just zip ties and that keeps from when you land it keeps from coming down on these motors and um, that's one of the big things about these motors is that if they hit hard especially if you use props that aren't cupped they don't come all the way down to the to the housing. When they come down, they'll pop an end cap off, and then that motor's dead. It doesn't work anymore. Um, so, with the battery, this is a 555 Ultimat from My Lipo. Good battery. Oh, let's make sure we're zeroed. Not quite. 59.5. So a kind of a heavy little guy. And I don't even have props on there. That probably adds another gram. Let's four props. 
60.7878 so it's going to be flyable it'll work just fine now uh, the the things that we're remaining to do would be to bind it that's going to vary on your transmitter if you have a Devo 7e which is what I use for all these DSM um, compatible uh, uh, Siski boards um, you can go back and watch my other video I can put a link up here to it and that shows you how to bind it and how to set up your radio because you have to reverse the, I think it's the aileron or rudder um, and uh, you have to change the scale to 147 to make sure that these bind up and you can get them armed but that's it full walkthrough of a micro build and you can do it too this one's actually a repaired micro build if you have any questions or comments or suggestions suggestions are always good I like those um, just leave them in the comments below and uh, I like uh, hearing from everyone on what you think and um, what you're looking to build um, I I think it's a, a really fun hobby and I always like to hear of other people having good times um, I have posted a few uh, flight videos which I didn't start out doing just because I didn't think anybody was interested but surprisingly enough some people were interested um, and I know people are watching them but uh, so I'm gonna finish this one up and hopefully the weather will cooperate here soon and I'll be able to take it out for a test drive thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos